a little bit of respect for the game launch, but more so actually maybe Proton. I'm a, I hope he's doing okay. Uh, Proton has been around. He's not been playing. Which is very funny to me because you feel like me, Gunner, would be someone would be a character they'd be seeing very often on Wi Fi. Or that you'd think like he would uh, adapt it really, but he just hasn't been playing. Yep. But alright, so. Yeah, you can see already like Mousetrat's not throwing out any Thunder Jolts. He's probably waiting to see, uh, he's probably waiting for Pink Age to get to a uh, high percent so he can properly punish him to try and you see it. how far Pikachu was? Away from Game and Watch's shield, and yeah. yet the up is still connected. What happened? Yeah, no. But like it's Pikachu actually... cannot cross up Game and Watch's shield stiffly with up at all. You just have to respect that completely. Like, like that's how Pikachu gets in. Right? He likes to land with up on your shield, cross you up, try to bait an out of shield option. Um, but but against Game and Watch, you really can't be doing that at all. What? I mean, yeah, again, no, like too he far tries away to, to get go that through punish. the bait. He tried to bait his approach in with T-Jolts, and, and yet he was still able to, uh... Goodness, He's just too far. <laughs> wow, yeah, Mas there's one thing Game Watch... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, like, Mascot just, like, not able to get anything started. You know, like, mm -hmm. being, like, such a combo, like, hit-heavy character. Um, that being said, you know, completely taking all the words I said right back. <laughs> able to get a couple <laughs> of hits right there. You know, if there's one thing that uh, that Game Watch is really good at is just putting out hitboxes that have disastrous consequences if it hits your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, and Pink Cage is kind of just doing that really well so far. Uh, he's taking a few strings from Pikachu because you know it's Pikachu. He hasn't really taken any big, like super big hits that would cause him to lose a stock yet. Yeah, like Mascot, he's just going blow through blow with Game Watch, but I feel like every time that he goes blow through blow, Game Watch is the one that you know comes out winning these trades, especially not only oh. is he a stock up. So scary. Oh, so close to being dead for Mousetrat. Those pixels, pixels away from death. The yeah. bullet just shot right to the left of his like temporal lobe. Yo, these up airs are really well placed from uh, Pikachu. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah, like he just did like a super far thunder jump and he was fighting. Wow. And now he's about to give Game & Watch the Game Ender. But not before getting the F-Smash. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I'd argue, like, maybe Mousetrap's, like, one of those players that he does have really good endurance. I would argue, like, he does a good job with set play. He, he you know, he ferments. He, got, he, gets, he gets better with a little bit of time. Um, So he usually, <laughs> like, takes Game 1 to adapt a little bit. I feel like this is what happened the last time they played, uh, about a month ago as well, where Mousetrap had a pretty tough Game 1. Um, and then he just adapted very appropriately. However, that being said, I really want to commend um, Pink Cage's ability to juggle. I feel like that's what like really separates the boys from the men in, in Smash sometimes. Like your ability to catch on to your opponent's drift. Are, are they the type to cross you up? How well are they able to mix it up? What are their patterns? And you can get so much damage that Yeah. You can see the way that Mousetrat... Mousetrat stopped throwing out Thunder Jolts with the expectation that he's going to be able to get back on stage. Uh, for free doing it, and now he's just kind of being really wary of how he's trying to approach his returns. Uh, but you know, if Pinkchi gets wise and he realizes that he might do thunders underneath the stage, he might give him the, the bucket anyways. He's just been taking so much damage from these up to up -ers. Oh like, my gosh! <laughs> ah. Ugh. Look at That's that taste in my mouth. What percent was he at? I don't know. 60? Let me, let me go see the replay. 69%. He got hit at 69%. Nice. 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 <sighs> and he died. I mean, like, he had no chance of surviving that. Oh, please hold up. I just want to say that was like an excellent lead on um his part. Because I feel like what happened was the upbeat like crossed up the shield or something. Um, and, and he was just like anticipating him to either like drop his shield or for his up smash to connect. I feel like the last two stocks were huge callouts to Mouse Rat, just basically saying, Hey buddy, I know that you're gonna up you right onto my shield uh, when you're recovering from deep off stage, so maybe you don't want to do that. And now Mouse Rat's just gonna be terrified to go for these high recoveries, right? That's what Pikachu does. Pikachu Pikachu is just so adept at like being able to circumvent ledge trapping, just able to get right back onto the center stage and keep the game going. Um, and if Mouse Rat's now conditioned not to do that, we're gonna be seeing a very different game, game too. Um, especially in terms of recovery options. 
Yeah. As far as I know, this is Pink Sheet's first time. Uh... Oh, I want to point out the fact, and I just noticed this in the replay, that uh, that was more of a trade. Um, Pink Sheet did, I think, a back air, and it clanked with the helmet. Or, I'm sorry, not Pink Sheet. Uh, Mouse Red did a back air, and it clanked with the, uh, with the up smash. Because you can see, like, the little bubble when, uh, when two moves make contact. Three, two, one, go! He's got a big head. Game Launch has got a massive head. It's got a little bit of an on it, too. That is hilarious. I love the way Mouse got just started this. He just waited. Um, yeah, and also, what he was doing. Yeah, it's still gonna sell it off aggressively. You know, just a good way to get a read on, on you know, how your opponent's gonna be approaching neutral for this game. But, wow. Pink Cage is so on top of it right now. Look at this. He is positioning himself so well. He is so comfortable of, like, he's so aware of when Mousecat wants to go in with upbeat. However, Mousecat finally able to start something, uh, only dealing 25% damage, not able to get the full back air uh, chains that he was looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to remember, like, you can't just hit, uh, you can't just hit Game & Watch on his shield. He has an incredibly good out of shield option, and if you're anywhere near him, it's over. You can expect to get hit by that, and potentially a follow-up, depending on the center at. I really oh. want to. Oh, that was so scary. That could have gone south so quickly. I do think uh, Mascot was up in the air, uh, so that's why he didn't get buried. I want to really, really commend uh, Pink Cage's usage of his floater. He's using it to control the airspace super well, keeping Mascot grounded or forcing him to only go in with these up B approaches. Mascot, he just feels like cornered, right? Like, like, a, like a rat in a maze almost. He does not know how to go in on, on Pink Cage right now. He's destroying the bomb. Yeah, that was definitely like a bit of an awkward interaction. Just like it just sort of like froze time for the second. You know, Game & Watch forward air is kind of a crazy good move. It has a lot of knockback. It has it covers a lot of area. Uh, and it can be really tough to get rid of it too because you have to have a sufficiently strong move to disable it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, trying and to break again, that And again with these up smashes and just catching Mouse that's standing there. That is so scary. His shield is looking... So thin right now, it's looking super, super tiny. The next up smash might even shield break, but he goes right into it. Yeah, no. Game of Watch is awesome at just putting out hitboxes and covering space super well. Um, I'm not sure who put Pink Cheat into losers. I'm kind of interested to see if any of the people that just that are waiting for him later on. So let me just check. Hmm. Or Pink, Pink Cage, sorry. Yeah, Pink Cage is doing exceptionally well right now. Like, he has no reason to go in right now. He's just flying around with Uppy. He's just seeing what Mouse God is going to do. And honestly, these kinds of tactics, even though they're, like, they're, like a little bit like, repetitive, they can be very, very helpful in just, like, sort of debating your opponent into an unsavory option. There's really no reason not to do it, especially if you have such a strong lead. That being said, he's continuing these juggles. Mouse God keeps trying to land aggressively uh, onto these uppers, and, and, you know, Pinkage is just not letting Mouse God get away with this. Yeah, Mouse Guard. Oh, he's very delayed. Hmm? He's delayed that, uh, that upbeat by a lot. Is that a bucket? No, I don't believe so. He, he got hit by it at the very end, but it wasn't enough to uh, actually set him off the top. Game and Watch with Rage. Super scary. He just dragged down there into upbeat. He keeps piling on this damage. Like, I, I think even like a down air could kill at this point. Yeah, well, it definitely could. Especially because uh, I don't think Cage has been using down air all that much to begin with. Oh, no, no, we were mistaken. Absolutely not. Not quite yet. Oh, and we have a full bucket on deck. Uh, the stock doesn't matter because uh, Nostrad makes one mistake. He's going to die immediately. Oh! Like, the entirety of this game, I feel like Mouse Guard Shield has been looking super, super thin. Um, but right now, he has a much better lead of how he wants to go in. He's, like, getting these hits in, and he's running away and shielding. Maybe trying to bait um, Pink Cage to overextend a little bit. Whoa. What hitbox was that? That was down air. Zenner actually beat the Thunder down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, Mouse he's getting more comfortable just sort of sitting in shield and waiting for, um, for Pink Cage a little bit to push in too far. He's get starting to get a little bit greedy with these up smashes, I feel like. I like that Mouse not trying to challenge those up airs, up bees in the sky either. He's just sort of waiting for uh, Pink Cage to land a little bit. <laughs> yeah, bomb. For mid stage, almost killing. Yeah, absolutely, man. Ah, 
A downer though, man. Uh, that was a good. That was a good angle downer from from Pancake because it excellently like covered the roll out or like the dash out. Um, he didn't directly go into Mouse yet, but man, that's tough. <laughs> that's all I can say about that. That was that looked like such a tough game. That looked even more difficult uh, than it did on Battlefield. I don't even know what stage, like like. Mouse God could be taking this to. It looked super tough on Battlefield. It looked super tough on uh, on Kalos. Wait, yeah. um, excuse me. Game one was Smashville, not not Battlefield. All right. So Pink Cage uh, apparently lost the sour now. Pink Cage lost the sour. Okay. Yeah. So that was uh, that was I think that was winners round two or three. I'm not really sure. But yeah, no. Pink Cage is in uh, is primed in a great spot. If they win, they're gonna they're gonna go fight Zach. Mhm. Mm Oh wait, exact numbers. So where are we in bracket right now? Which which round is this? this? Loser semis. Uh, winner of this fights Zach in in a uh, in losers finals, and then winner fights Beast in grands. Hmm. Yeah, this. Looks really tough for Mouse Cat. Uh, I think Pink Cage has such a like a solid handle on the matchup. He seems so confident. He also has like a really good on, read on Mouse Cat as a player. Um, like he's getting him like super super afraid to to go through those upbeats back onto sounding stage. He seems to be in his head a little bit. I don't know what Mouse Cat can do. Uh, <laughs> Pink Cage, I've I've never seen like such confident match play from him honestly. You know, gonna be taking it to the battlefield. Again, like, I feel like this might be a bit of a tough stage to say Game & Watch to. He's able to get so many platform extensions um, off of his throws and, and from the neutralers. Like, I know, like, on some floaties, he can get, like, 0 to 50 very, very consistently as well. Like, no matter your DI, very reactable as well. That being said, Mousecat finally being the one to get the first hit. What a read! Just catching that air dodge in with the down B. I like the patience with Mouse Cutter going into this game. Like, he's just waiting it out. He's waiting for, for Pink Cage to overextend. He's waiting for him to press the button first. Look at that. He's just, like, pressing up beyond his shield. He's just ex um, expanding his resources for no reason. Yeah, no. It's, uh, Mouse Rat's playing a much different game. He's like, all right, I've tried playing aggressive. I've tried tossing him off. I've tried doing, like, all my normal stuff. Let me try just waiting and see maybe he'll crack under that pressure of me just forcing him to approach each time. I mean, look at this mouse that's just waiting. He's waiting for Pain Cage to push in too far because I feel like a lot of his approaches right now might be uh, over commitments. <laughs> yeah, just wait till the right moments uh, when your opponent starts moving <laughs> off and then you can counter punch. Well, you know, Pain Cage probably isn't going to make that mistake again if, uh, if Mouse Rat puts him in that position. Yeah, now he's, start he's starting to even it up just a little bit. But I feel like both players are only getting stray hits on one another once again. Nobody able to get anything more than that. You know, Mouse just like waiting for, for uh, Pink Cage to put himself in the corner. Ooh. What was that? Yeah, that F smash super, super got extended by the bear. He had and enough because, time uh, to shield. Yeah, no, it was, it was extended like literally up to the last frame. It was crazy. Huh. I want to take a look at that hitbox. I'm curious if that, that hitbox um, actually like expands and stretches out a little bit. Or in because, because oh. Mouse Rat with the lead for the first time in the set. <laughs> he's, he's made the proper adjustments, right? Now it's up to uh, Pink Cage to be able to make his approaches a little bit more ambiguous, to start maybe like walking up and shielding a little bit, uh, incorporating a little bit more dashbacks, because I feel like a lot of his approaches right now are really, really aggressive, and every time he goes for the jump, he tries to uh, cover the airspace with the forward air. Yeah, I've uh, so I'm like quickly confirming this just now. Pikachu's F Smash. I want to just take a look at this move. Yeah, so basically it slowly extends outward from Pikachu, kind of similar to Ness's dash attack. So the initial hits of it were extended um on the bomb um, hitbox, right? And then like when it got to like the final like dish joint, like the longest part of the move. Already, Pink Cage is already able to sit and shield and avoid it. Alright, good bucket of the thunder. Is that up air gonna kill him? Not quite. 
Uh, we're starting to get to the point where anything Game & Watch does to Pikachu is going to kill. But honestly, it looks like Mousetrap's just considering doing going for the timeout. Or at least making it What like else can the, he do? Uh, what else can he do? Like, like yeah. I don't know any other way that he can pace the set. Every time that he approaches, every time that he tries to cross up Game & Watch to shield, every time that he tries to do basic Pikachu things, uh, he gets he gets kind of slapped around for it. Uh, so I feel like the counter play next set is just going to be either players approaching each other, both of them are just going to wait on their respective corners, and it's going to be, you know, like a standoff. Yeah. I mean, technically, uh, Pink Cage has the better options for camping, because he has a good punish for, uh, for Thunder Jones, and he also has... And he has like some mid range projectiles and kind of puts a mm -hmm. space. And he but has you can't to have the camp lead when to you have a two stock deficit. Absolutely. Yeah. You cannot camp when you have a lead in. That's why you see him starting to be a little bit aggressive, trying to catch Mouse Rat's aggression. But you see with how much reservation Mouse Rat is playing right now. Ooh, that was a little bit of a. Yeah, yeah. that up B was questionable for sure. He put himself into corner now. Once again, crossing up. Uh, Game and Watch the Shield this time doing it super safely, though. So risky. Watch has a lot of kill moves that actually have very little startup relative to uh, how much power they have. But you know what? They're still kind of laggy, so if you shield them, uh, you can still get some decent punches. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Again, like the thing I mentioned about Mouse Cat being like a set play player, like it kind of is starting to really, really ring true. He's made so many adjustments in his play, he's made so many adjustments in his approaches. He waits for pink cage to get a little bit antsy before he goes through these uppies. I love that retreating back here to bait out the uppie and potentially get a punish on it. Mm, doesn't get the up smash on the dash attack, just went for his like autopilot safest option here. Yeah. The fact that like uh, the way pink cage is playing is just, I mean the way that uh, mouse is playing is like super safe. He's trying to make it so that if pink cage goes for anything that's harder of a punish than an uppie is going to get, he's going to get spanked for it. But that was a pretty good down air from pink cage finally securing the first stock. He has a minute and 43 seconds on the clock. There is no reason why, like, Mouse Cat should be losing his stock anytime oh. soon. Ugh. Except for that, but you kind of blew it. I mean, a 1 out of 9 chance. Listen, if it's a 1 out of 9 chance, then there's another 1 out of 9 chance that you could get it again, okay? <laughs> like, it's it's extremely unlikely, but you know what? It'll ha it might happen. I've seen it, it happen, happen before. Anything is possible. It totally happen. They removed the, uh, the ability to try to, to reduce the odds of it happening, or increase the odds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know, man. This is looking really tough. Now, that was such a good T-Jolt into the F-Smash. Uh, Mascots confirms this game really looking extremely solid. He's able to convert off of his T-Jolt so well. He needs to be careful to not try to fish through those dash attacks, um, especially when it won't even kill. Like, at 110%, I can't even see Pikachu's dash attack killing on Battlefield. Ooh, wow, that F-Smash. Just catching the bucket there, just like the... In case tried to stall with the bucket right at the ledge, and ended up screwing him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in case being like, I'm banning both triplats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Pikachu had mad space. He had mad space to run around. He had mad space just to sort of pace it at his own, um, you know, timing. Mouse Rat, I like the way that he made his up be super ambiguous. Like, whenever he cornered himself, like, he made it... Every time he went for an uppie out of the corner, uh, Pink Cage like, basically had to flip a coin as to where he was going to be and where to go. And if he pushed in a little bit too far, he's going to end up the one being hit. That was just a crazy, crazy set of adjustments from Mousetrap. That was actually really good. Mm -hmm. It looked like the, the set was going to go 100% in Pink Cage's favor. Mousetrap just figured out how to play the matchup better. Now the question is, uh, how big of a contributor was this stage to those adjustments? Uh, now that Pink Cage is banning both the triplats, like, where can he go? Where can Mouse Rat go that's going to, um... That would actually help. And of course, this is Pink Cage's, uh, choice right now. So mm -hmm. it's even assuming that Mouse Rat does win the next game, like, where would he, where would he want to counter it? Call him a chiropractic, because his adjustment... Never mind. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stop with this. Please go on. <laughs> no, please, keep going. It, Devin, it doesn't sound, so, it doesn't so sound like a bad meme. Devin, that was so loud. Devin, that was, that was awful. Devin's just, Devin just loud as hell. Yeah. Please go on. <laughs> Devin, you scared the hell out of me. No, I'm, I'm actually going to bite my tongue because you know what? I have respect for the viewers. I have respect for the viewers. I have respect for the chat. I, yeah, I don't want to ruin the day. Darn. 
I'll be 44 of them. And in yeah. fact, I don't want to pun about chiropractors making adjustments beyond the VOD. Maybe it's a little bit too late for that, but at least my intent is there. <laughs> so you had an adjustment of yourself. <sighs> I don't know how to respond to that. How, what would you like me to say to that? You, you kind of just put those words out there. How would you, what would you like? Well, ideally, how would you like me to respond? To no way. I'm hungry. <sighs> you guys have a bit into a chiropractor, though. It's kind of nice. It is satisfying to, like, crack your bones. It is. Yeah, like, I've been like, to a chiropractor. Yeah. They told what? me I had to go back every week. I had to come back two times a week, and it's $40 copay. Absolutely like, not. No. You're nuts. No. I mean, my back hurts a lot, but it doesn't hurt that much. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have eighty dollar a week copay, that much. Yeah, they cut it down to twenty five, and I was like, okay, I can do this for a bit. They, hmm, hmm, something about that sounds a little bit sus. They're like, oh, you can't, you don't want to pay the forty dollars. You can pay the twenty five dollars. It's fine. It's on us. I was just like, yeah, I can't afford forty bucks a week. Uh, forty bucks a visit, two times a week. <laughs> you nuts. Hey, I fixed my back. Nice. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Oh, back Kalos. To Kalos. Back to Kalos. And back to Kalos. You see Pink Kate again, hoping he doesn't want to give Pikachu the time of the day. And Master of Shows running to the opposite side of the stage. Uh, uh, All right, now run away. Just run away. Just run stay away. on your side of the stage. Hit and run. Look at this. Go. this is... He has a 13% lead. This is the state of our game, guys. This is yep, neutral. That's right. This is optimal neutral. Oh my god, what is happening? I hate this. I hate all of this. Chef is uh, crazy good in this game. They buffed all of uh, Game & Watch's moves and they all make me bad. This is peak ultimate neutral, by the way. Just wait. <laughs> you know, just, just wait for the other places to do something. It was kind of weird though how like Mouse got decided like, hmm, he's on the other side of the stage. I know I will dash attack him. You know my my laggy kill option on Game and Watch your Shield at 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 seventeen percent. So yeah, no, I, I can't help but kind of question Mouse got's decision there. I'm sure I'm sure like either could follow up into something. Or, you know it could have been, been like a miss input. He might have been trying to do a pivot count. Who knows? A solid three percent lead though. Time to time him out. There was a network error. Twitch actually, my Twitch actually gave up on us. Wait, no, 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 same, same here. The Twitch just passed away. Um, my bitrate is still green, so. Yeah, no, I just reloaded the page and it came back. Okay. That's really weird that Twitch is like, yeah, I don't care to stream this anymore. Bye. Even, even Twitch has had enough of, of this patient play. Even Twitch said, you know, what? enough is enough. Nobody needs to see this. Twitch is looking out for us, you know? Sometimes they do something. It's right. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> I've never had the platform be like, yeah, get off. <gasps> While we were doing all that nonsense, what uh, is Pink this? Cage lost the lead and then got back the lead. Why did that almost, almost kill? Did you see that? Yeah, no. Game Watch Shab is strong. Was that either like atrocious? Game Watch Shab is kind of strong. Like, it has a good amount of knockback. Like, Game & Watch's jab is especially tilting just because of, like, how slow the multi-hits are. Like, even though it's just, like, any other multi-hit jab, because of how slow it is, you feel like you're getting hit for a lot more. What was that? What just traded? Down it? I have no idea. All I know is, uh, we're three minutes into this match and we haven't lost stock yet. I'm sure that's gonna change any second now. Fast forward to three minutes later and we're still on the first stock. Nobody wants to over the extent, nobody wants to push in. Everybody's just, you know, kind of kind of playing this really safe right now. Yeah, no, I don't blame either of them, because the first person to lose the stock is going to be the one that's going to have, like, all the advantage for the rest of the match. Mm -hmm. Can't help but think that there is, like, a better way to go about that. That dash attack might have been misinput at F-Tilt. Who knows, F-Tilt might have killed Pikachu at 120. Ooh, so close to death there. Please. Some... Somebody take a stock. Somebody die! 
All right, guys, we're 50% through the match. Oh, there we go. Game Watch dying at 153 to Pikachu. Oh. Uh, Game Watch does not have a kill throw, so Fantastic. he has to work for the kill? Question mark? What's happening? Uh, well, Mousetrad has the lead, and he's going to try to carry it as long as far as he can. Why, why does he need to push? He doesn't want to lose it this time. Doc, he's just gonna run away. He has three minutes on the clock. Yeah. That I, I probably... barely just did not connect. That yeah, so I'm close. surprised. That's a, that's a good dash back to the mascot after he got the back kill. He wasn't confident enough that he'd be able to link them together, so he just waited out a potentially like uh, aggressive match. Out of disadvantage though, Mousegat not losing his stock quite yet. Yeah, back kill not that strong. I'm sending two minutes and 40 seconds around the clock. Oh, there we go. Dash attack taking it. 35% deficit. <sighs> All that for a drop of blood. How long it takes to to, to um like build up a 35% lead? Mousegat is just refusing to engage. He doesn't even want to make this lead any bigger. All he wants to do is run away. He wants to tie him out. I hate this. Give me like Ajita, dude. This is uh, this is like this is bothering me like intensely. You know, I'd like I'd like. Like, I kind of want to see- oh my god, yes! Oh, uh, the comeback! The comeback! One shrink. I can't believe one it! One shrink and one out Audrey. That's all he needed, and now he has the lead. Why does he need to approach? Look at this, and the lead's getting even bigger. Mouse Rat has no, to- No, Mouse Rat's approaching poorly. No, Mouse Rat's- Mouse Rat's angry, no! Oh, Mouse Rat, no, coming in strong! 5% lead! 4%! I can't wait for this game to come down to like the uh, the blast, uh, the bubble causing damage. <laughs> I hate I'm calling so it now. <laughs> that was such an unfortunate whip dash grab too. He would have uh, had it. He might have potentially even been able to yeah. kill. Okay. This has been Cage's match. He has like he has the momentum. Has he has the lead. Huge lead. Look at this lead. <laughs> oh, <30. laughs> A huge lead. Forty <laughs> percent. Massive lead. <laughs> The lead doesn't stop there! 40%! <gasps> Wait, I'm doing the math. Six! Yeah? Is this is this it for the mouse rat? Is this over? No, uh, I can see mouse rat getting the kill in the next 40 seconds. That was, okay, that was excellent. Yeah, he, I, don't, he I, don't, I don't know if it was a good idea to scale the, uh, the dash attack. Yeah. yeah, he might have needed a little bit of a later percent. However, he has 40 seconds on the clock. Finn Cage has no reason to go and he has no reason to approach. That was such a risky air dodge. 20% yeah, lead. Featherweights. Like, either of them can die, like, literally the next hit. <laughs> Speaking of next hit. 20 seconds left! Please don't make this long. 10% difference. I hate this. I hate this so much. This is making me so antsy. Yo, that's got some bad <gasps> This might be it. That's Five it. seconds it. left! He's gonna run up and try to get like Get the up smash! smash. Get no. the up smash! That's oh, it's over. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb! <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You know, guys, I, mean, I think that we should extend the timer to 10 minutes so that they have to camp each other three more minutes. Uh, if you ever want proof that an extended timer does not help with camping, you literally need to look at this. Two players who are like, yeah, if I approach and I attack aggressively, I'm going to lose. You know, this is a symptom of Wi-Fi. Let me explain why this is a symptom of Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi, like, subtle, like, movement... And like really like subtle approaches, just some flip and dash in and out of your opponents. So that's much less effective because of your inability to react. That is a very reactive based kind of play that is meant to to challenge like this kind of defensive play, right? And and that kind of countermeasure just simply cannot be employed when you can't react to your opponent. Uh, from from. <laughs>